uh, Tim just worked the fuck out of us. I was legitimately going to be like, no, we're having this conversation. This is going to be a Wrestle Talk Federation debate right now because I will put the Young Bucks further down that list in a heartbeat. Let's do it right now. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> All right, now, sorry. Moving along. It is your show. <laughs> Tim, you said you're biased pizza. Just <laughs> the evidence. I, I see it. It's on the internet. It's, it's on the clear. internet forever. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We like uh, pepperoni. <laughs> it's up first. In a close-up with Renee Paquette interview on AEW's YouTube channel, Chuck Taylor confirmed he's been told his in-ring career might be over as a result of his injured ankle. Taylor said he plans to get the recommended surgery and is holding out hope he might be able to wrestle again after that. He plans to spend the summer focused on learning the -the behind-the-scenes roles he's been working in since his ankle initially was injured last October. Then have the surgery. Happy healing for Chuck Taylor. I do yeah. think it is a shame that you don't wear Chuck Taylor's as your name is Chuck Taylor, but I digress. I understand why he doesn't wrestle in them as somebody who does camera work in them regularly. I made the switch over to working camera in an old pair of running shoes because you get no real support. So I can only imagine how fucking hard it would be to try to work a match in them. Because I can't run in around, I can't. I have trouble running around an arena in my chucks, like keeping up with the match to shoot it. I couldn't imagine how hard it would be to run a match in Chuck Taylor's. That um, would be impossible. Alexa Bliss uh, does matches in um, knee high Chuck Taylor's, and she's yeah. fucking baller for that because there's no ankle support. So mad, I Alexa Bliss over Mid Morgan ten times out of ten. Uh, WWE has filed a new trademark for WCW on June 4th. I want fucking royalties. They closed theirs down. Me and Dad Hat started ours. If they want to start a a WCW again, they got to give us a cut of the pie. It is for merchandising purposes. Um, This isn't the first time that they have attempted to trademark it. They did it also in 2020. I assume that it's for some sort of like anniversary situation. Uh, anniversary of what? Buying the Federation a year ago? Or the anniversary of WCW? 1983 was when the TV show started. When did WCW Super Show start? It was mid to, eight, mid to late 80s. The Turner buyout was 86. So. Who the fuck knows? Yeah. It might be coming up. Who knows? Ola Des, thanks for stopping by, dropping some Ninja Turtles in the chat. Uh, During an interview on the Insiders podcast, former longtime WWE employee Tom Carlucci. Carlucci is a great name. Claimed that Vince McMahon is not allowed inside WWE headquarters. He can't even walk in the building. This also means that Vince is not allowed to use the gym inside the WWE headquarters. Carly G noted that the gym was created for Vince. He designed the gym with his personal trainer, Mike. Sucks to be you, nerd. You should have thought about that before you tried to sex traffic women. Allegedly. (laughs) Allegedly. (laughs) Allegedly. Allegedly. Sorry. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. You can't use your multi-million dollar gym because you're in the middle of a fucking huge uh, lawsuit. Allegedly. Uh, Russell Votes was told that Brian Breaker has impressed many higher-ups in his short stint on Raw and that WWE has considerably altered its creative plans for him. One source mentioned that Braun is slated to be a major focus heading into the Netflix era. Bo, you got anything on Brian Breaker? I fucking love Braun Breaker. Oh my god, dude! Like, just give me Braun Breaker. <laughs> I like my some... Goldberg fucking ripoffs. I'm a Georgia uh, guy. The gym looks like the cafe from the Power Rangers show. Um, all right, I also love Braun Breaker. This isn't this isn't about Braun though. So word on the street is, and I'm not intentionally going back to Ricochet, but this ties in. It's long-term storytelling in this episode. That's how you book a show, ladies and gentlemen. Um, We talked about Ricochet some, okay? And we talked about TNA and the history of TNA. 
TNA has a long, illustrious history of straight killing fucking wrestlers off. Okay? <laughs> They've done it a few times. They there has... <laughs> <laughs> they stabbed EY. <laughs> Diener just killed EY. Well. Yeah. And then he showed back up on TV like a month and a half later, two months later, like it was nothing. Uh. Just I'm back. It's no big. But I digress. There are rumors coming about. You ready? Make I, you ready, Bo? Yeah. What you got? They might allow Braun Breaker to take Ricochet out to get him off of television. How fucking cool will that be if they actually write a story? Break him in fucking half? Where Braun Breaker literally right. breaks someone. The That's camera how they get the shit flies everywhere. Just everything, just yeah. Down. Fucking, he spears him through a goddamn amount, like through a, a, a like one of the wall. boards or something, and like the LED boards, and it goes up in flames and sparks and everything like they used to do. And then they're like, oh shit, Ricochet broke his whatever in 12 places. The poor dude's gone forever. And then he shows up on AEW on Wednesday. And then three years later, they resurrect him on fucking. They kill the elite. Killed Adam Cole off. They did literally when they killed him off of BTE. Yeah. 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 And we appreciate you guys hanging out for this off the rails episode (laughs) of Flash Plots and Chair Shots. But this is what I love about the episodes when it's just the three of us. (laughs) Earlier this week, some people in the media reported that AEW Collision. (laughs) only drew 122,000 viewers for the June 1st episode. Uh, Danny Meltzer says that this is a completely fake number and was supplied by WWE because of its it's a pro wrestling war. And WD is far more effective at getting news out there and controlling a lot of the media. Do we think that AEW and WWE are in a war? I think that AEW, I think Tony Khan is in a war that uh, Triple H is unaware of. Tony Khan is fighting his war with addiction. He's Ethan Paging. Yeah, Tony Khan's fighting a war with himself. He's Tony (laughs) Khan versus the Coke Man. That's the fight Tony Khan. That's the war Tony (laughs) Khan is having. Um, I know you're absolutely right. I was about to say, if you check out my shit on last word on sports, I've explained a thousand and one times about how the pro wrestling is in a cold war. Two world powers that indirectly chose a side in a regional conflict. They had nothing to do with triple a and CMLL triple a is paired with TNA who is now paired with WWE. Then AEW paired with New Japan, who was paired with CMLL. So that led to CMLL and Triple or AEW working together. So these two world powers picked sides and something they had nothing to do with. And now they're gathering allies. It's a cold fucking war. Thank you, Tim. Check it out. Last word on sports. Be Will Gray. According to Fightful, Jack's WWE contract is set to expire at the end of June. There are currently no plans for him on Raw. And WWE has yet to make him an offer. Okay. Let Dijak ratio the world. Yeah. Honestly, I couldn't even tell you what he looks like. Dijak, he looks like the Terminator. I'll be back. He was the uh, the cop, the 1980s cop. In, oh, you don't watch NXT. Never mind. Shit. Uh, he had that really great match against Keith Lee on NXT. Shit. Um, Scout says, Well, you don't watch NXT, <laughs> Brian Alvarez, about the, the thing with the, the Mexican promotions. Uh, Brian Alvarez heard that Rocky Romero played a key role in the agreement that will allow CMLL and Triple A wrestlers to work on the same shows. However, it is not expected that Stars and Brooks promotions will be allowed to work in the same match. Um, The updated policy between AEW, CMLL, and New Japan seems to be that people who have not worked for AAA of late but are Mexican-born are allowed to work on shows with CMLL talent. Ray Phoenix last worked for AAA in October 2022, so he was allowed to wrestle on this week's Dynamite, which featured CMLL stars. It's not clear where Rush... Roosh, Roosh, falls into in that classification because he appeared on Dynamite but did not wrestle on the card. 
the MLL is okay at times with Mexican talent doing angles on shows with CMLL talent, but not doing matches. If Roosh is not allowed to wrestle on the same show at CMLL talent, then his match with MJF likely won't happen at Forbidden Door. Did you guys hear that? She just reinforced everything I just said about the Cold War by using headlines and deductive reasoning because there's still issues with CMLL and AAA talent working together. It's been happening since uh, AAA's founding in 1993, 1992. Antonio Pena. That's a name for you. Yeah. Antonio Pena. Um, my last thing. Uh, Daddy Meltzer also mentioned that AEW is in discussions with signing Ross and Marshall Von Erich. Um, I did say last week that the uh, uh, Von Erich brothers have said that this is going to be a good year for them. So we should see them show up somewhere. Just be safe. Your family's fucking cursed and we love the shit out of you guys. Just be safe, please. Don't do drugs. Don't, <laughs> don't buy a motorcycle. Don't do drugs. Don't own Stay guns. Yeah. Don't go to Japan if you can avoid it. Like, set uh, that tour out. Please uh, get proper mental health care. Yeah. Please see it is a voodoo, a voodoo yeah. priestess to uncurse you. Thank yeah. you. It is Men's Mental Health Awareness Month, so shout out. Everybody is missing Anthony Bourdain, i.e. me. Um, was that it? Is that the last thing? On that's the last thing. All right, this is my favorite. This this is going to be amazing. I'm going to set this up because I'm going to be able to bring so I can bring the card up. I'm going to put it over here in the corner, um, like that. Save, save. Um, open. Is this going to be like when uh, we had Ritter uh, come up with names for our new Japan stars? Yeah, sort of. All right, we're going to go down this card now and we're going to have you predict Battleground without watching a without watching NXT at all. Um, you want me to make it a little bit bigger for you? I can't see these people's faces. All right, let me I'll stretch it out some and like, I'd just like to say that Ethan Page is a TNA guy and this pay-per-view is headlined by two reverently TNA people. I don't want to cover Bo up too much. So can you put us like on the little side? Right, right there. Is that good? No, can you do the thing like when we watch where we're like on the side? Yeah. Like that. Um, there we go. This is live TV, ladies and gentlemen, getting everything Sweet. situated. That's not the right background. There we go. All right. Um, so we're going to run down this card now that I've got my life back together. Um, so let's just start at the top. Tag team wise, the NXT tag titles are on the line. Al, Axiom and Nathan Frazier versus the Good Brothers. Um, who you got in that? And uh, what do you think about Axiom and Nathan Frazier? I know you know who the Good Brothers are. Uh, I mean, as the Good Brothers are on the main roster, I feel like that Axiom and uh, Fabio should uh, win this match. Fabio is one of uh, Seth Rollins' uh, proteges, and Axiom is formerly a kid from NXT UK. Um, so you think they're going to retain? Yeah. Bo, who you got in the tag title match? Oh, I got the brothers, baby. Don't bet against the club. Yeah, dude. Don't bet against the club. Good brothers by my. Um, have you seen what they've done to the club? Finn Balor. AJ Styles. I mean, they, where the, the fuck is Meechin? Yeah, but they are Meechin's in a ladder match tonight. She's in the ladder match tonight. Let's go ahead. I want to do that one. Uh, I'm just bouncing all over the place. Deal with it. It's my show. Um, NXT Women's North American Title Ladder Match. Okay, first time that's the women's mid card for WWE. They haven't had one since the '60s, I think. Um, Saul Ruka. The last legend. Um, uh, fuck, Steph. Uh, what's her name? Fallon Henley. Uh, Kalani Jordan, Mi Chen, Mia Yim, and uh, Jada Parker. Who? Miss Parker. Miss Parker. Okay. 
I know who Lash is. Yeah. And I know who Mia Yim is. Uh-huh. Um, I feel like Fallon Henley is a redo of um Mickey James. No. Um uh, what's her name? The bitch that got fired because she like showed her titties. Mandy Rose. Mandy Rose, there you go. Really? How in the fuck do you get Mandy Rhodes from Fallon Henley? Yeah, I would have thought. Like, is she no? This country is shit. No, Fallon. I'm Henry, talking like visually. Fallon Henry is the one that I say looks like every bar back on Lower Broadway. But I, visually, those girls need like Mandy Rose. Not even close, says Tim. Whatever. So, who do you think wins the, yeah. the ladder match? Um, I'm sorry, I thought I'm going to say not Meechan because they dick her over all the time. Um, I don't know. It's probably going to come down to, I would say, Lash and Fallon. And I say that because they're the two that are next to the belt on the poster. What about Kalani Jordan? She's right beside it. Who? Okay, fair. Kalani Jordan. Bo, who you got in the ladder match? Which one is she? She's the one with the purple gear on the right side. I I know who I want to see win. I want to see Oh, Mayan I thought that was it. Lash. No, uh, Lash is right here. Oh, then but, sorry. It's going it's to be Kalani and uh, Fallon. I would assume that Fallon's going to win because you say that name a lot, so I feel like they're pushing her. I say it because I don't like her. Bo, who do you got? I want Mia Yim to win, but I think Lash is going to pull this one off. Sol Ruka. She's going to hit a soul snatcher out of nowhere. Um, triple threat match. Uh, AJ also wants Sol Ruka. Uh, triple threat match for the men's North American title. Joe Coffey, Obafemi, and Wes Lee. Al, who you got? Uh, I like Wes Lee. Yeah. MSK, the Rascals. I mean, he's real good. He is good. Uh, I don't know who the other two are. What's up, Mr. Fritz? It's good to see you, brother. Grub before NXT. Femi's keeping the belt. Don't know who wins, but Joe Coffey takes the law. Uh, he's going to take the pin. Um, I think maybe this one won't change. Oba retains. Bo, what do you think? Um, I'm going Wesley. I think Wesley also takes it back. Me and Bo are eye for an eye right now. Um, this gets us to the NXT underground match. And I've got two questions for you guys. One, who wins? And two, do they do something screwy and put these women in an octagon since they're in the Apex Center? Um, what's an underground match? Where they take the ropes off. Why is that underground? Because that's what they did for uh, Raw Underground and NXT Underground where they would do a no ropes like MMA style like fist fight. Like Josh Barnett's blood sport. Yeah, it's like WWE's version of Bloodsport. I'm going to say they'll probably give the win to Shayna only because she's the main roster talent and they're not going to want to make, for marketing purposes, because they have been pushing her a little bit more on the main roster, they're not going to want to make her look weak. Fair. I think Shayna also takes the win, and I would love to see it in an octagon. And they've also leaked pictures of the setup and the ropes are already up which makes it way more likely. But we know WWE can strip them and put them back up real quick, though. So yeah. I mean, are they the first match? We don't know. I haven't seen a run order yet. Scouse, I you. would say the ladies on the bottom are the first match. You think they'll do the ladder match to open? Mm-hmm. That's a good honest assumption. Not yet, says Scouse. Um, That leads us to the two main events. The semi is... Uh, one would assume will probably be the Jordan Gear, uh, Grace Roxanne Perez match. You think they'll main event because of the crossover work? Okay, so let's do the men's first then. Uh, whoa. Trick Willy Wonka and uh, All Ego Ethan Page. Heads up who you guys got. Scowls comes out hot just immediately, says Page. No questions asked. Um, since Ethan Page is not signed and he is just making an he appearance. Signed. He signed an NXT deal. But yeah, it's not an exclusive deal. Yeah, he came off all the indie shows. Yeah. Did he? Yeah, he dropped yeah. his dates. Oh. He's officially 
I feel like they're there. not done with this Trick Williams story. And I would just like to say that if he does come in and take this belt, every single person that bitched about about uh, Mercedes Monet coming in and winning a belt in her first match needs to shut the fuck up. Keep that same energy for Ethan Page. I actually want Ethan Page to win, and I can't believe I'm saying that because he wrestled himself. So for the longest time, I've been the biggest Ethan Page, like, just hater. Uh, because I thought Ethan Page versus Karate Man was the shit. The best thing in the world? I bo- I love you like a brother. You're my closest friend on this planet. But Jesus, that hurts my soul every time you, you say You don't that. open your mind to it, dude. You gotta dude, get real high and watch it. I have done LSD so many times, I have opened up 12 minds. Like, I don't this get Ethan Page himself. versus Karate Man. He wrestled himself and I went, How hard huh? is it? It would be hard as shit, but it was CGI, though. It is 1,000% the same thing. Please tell me how it's different. What? (laughs) Scout says it's not the same thing if Ethan Page wins, um, but but he complained about Mercedes. I will will say the biggest thing there is uh, Ethan didn't come in and do three months' worth of promos before he had his first match. Well, she... Wasn't cleared. I get it. She wasn't cleared, and they did that because they were losing ratings. Okay, I don't doubt it. Uh, Bo, did you pick? I I was one of those people bitching about Mercedes, but I'm like you, Will. I I think they're pushing Ethan like they push Bobby Roode. I also think that Trick is on his way up to the main roster. Um, I think him and Lash's storyline is more limelight than the title is right now. It's a bigger story than the title. They can put the title on Ethan Page. Then Lash Legend and the breakup can go back to the forefront. She can come lick his wounds and they can get back together. And it'll be this big story for Trick. And again, I think that that will be a main roster story they tell because they see how many eyes are on it and it's fantastic. And with Matt coming in clutch, NXT right now, outside of the Don, and I, this is going to break Matt's little Sicilian heart, but they fumbled the Don by having him lose to Ilya, but then turn around and win the Heritage Cup because it made it look like a consolation prize. Um, And you're right, Trick and Noam Dar wouldn't sell a PLE. I just feel like they fumbled Tony D'Angelo because he could have been a big enough star to take the belt off of Trick. And I don't feel like they handled that well by making him eat that L to Ilya. No, it was was it against Elia or was it against Trick? It was against Elia when he had his match. It was. I remember that now. Will was half wrong. What am I half wrong about? I don't know, but while you're he's right. gonna say that the, the cup isn't a consolation prize, it's his first championship, and it was a I chance for him to win. Um, yeah. highlight scouses comments. Um Willow and Mercedes had a long story starting in New Japan. Like, she didn't just walk out. Walk, she just didn't get worked into a story. It has been a building story for quite some time. But alas, agree to disagree. It is the same. I love you, but the same. The cup isn't a consolation prize, see? <laughs> I love you, Mateo. I knew exactly where you were going. Me and Katie had the same fight. Um, That means the main event. Um, Roxanne Perez, Jordan Grace. What do you guys think? We're going to shock the world tonight. You think that Jordan leaves the Jordan two belts, Bo? Is that what you're saying? The juggernaut all the way. Fair. Al, who you got? You know both of these women well. You've had a chance to uh, to be in the same air, as they say, with Jordan Grace. You've seen her work many a times. Uh, we haven't had a chance to see Roxanne Perez live, though. Who do you got? Okay. I'm going to start. She was at the with... Rumble. Yeah. Well, we've seen Jordan Grace a lot more than Roxanne Perez, though. Yeah. Fair. So, before I – Say what I'm going to say. They're probably, well, let me, they're going to probably give it to Jordan. But what I don't understand is why they take this women's belt and always take it away from actual NXT women's 
talent. We put it on main roster stars. We put it on guest people. Like, can the NXT women not hold this belt? Like, I don't understand. You have a huge women's roster in NXT, a huge good women's roster in NXT. Why do we keep taking the NXT women's title and putting it on non-NXT talent? Can I can I answer a rebuttal for you? Sure. That's because for historically, for the last probably six years, I would say at least 2018, when people ask, who are the two best promotions with the best women's division? What do you say? Everybody TNA. always says TNA and NXT. And they have forever. This is a chance for both companies who historically have two of the best women's rosters to cross-pollinate. Well, in, like I understand like this instant, but I'm just saying like in general, they do this a lot where they put other and it's not necessarily they hold that up but they put non nxt women in this title picture they do it a lot <laughs> they're getting at you in the chat i know they are because they don't agree but like again like from a actual like business marketing standpoint like i I get some of it, but you're not progressing your own talent and getting people to watch your product for its own merits. You're having to use outside things to get actual visualization on this. And when those things go away, the numbers go back down. It is what it is. Can I give you guys a hint from the inside of the business from my weak, meager, little green mind? Okay. You know the hint that gives you the idea that there's more than a good chance that Jordan Grace is probably walking out with this title? Hmm. They're introducing a women's mid-card belt. There's going to be another women's belt on that show that's going to be highly coveted for. They're going to fight for it. They're going to want to because I'm with you guys. I think Jordan Grace walks out Jordan two belts, and then what we see is when whoever answers that open challenge on Friday – when and it, we know they're not from TNA. Whoever opens that door on Friday wins the TNA Knockouts Championship and brings it back to WWE. And what you see is both titles on TV for the wrong show. And I think that's the direction they're building it, and that's how they're going to help put eyes on it. Yeah. And I, I, I agreed, Matt. It could be mutually beneficial. I'm not saying that in this instant it was. Well, they just seem to do a lot with NXT where it's like, oh, who can we bring? Who can we bring in? You know. No, I I I think that people should like NXT for NXT, not who they bring in from other places. I think people should like NXT for liking NXT for what they are, but then also appreciate the fact that Sean Michael Hickenbottom is fucking wrecking the business right now as far as how booking goes and if he doesn't win booker of the year then like it's not real scales i don't have to watch it to understand how the marketing and like the business side of it works like that is that doesn't matter also true that's it has no one has been hindered on NXT. You know who was hindered though? Gender. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did there? Oh shit! I'm all confused. I'm all fuckered up. Um, there we go. That'll work for now. All right, guys, it's time to plug ourselves so we can go get some pizza and watch some NXT <laughs> Battleground. Yeah. Al, plug yourself live on air. I'm going first. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um. Yes, but do I actually? Yeah. Anyways, um, you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at just a girl nine one eight. I am looking for. I need one, two, like four gentlemen. I guess three, if I use Mister Gray, uh, to do some voiceover work for me for my heel support group. I uh, need somebody who can mimic Paul Heyman's voice. 
So please hit up the uh, DMs if you are interested. Is that it? That's it. No socials or nothing? I said it first. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bo, you're up? Um, here every Sunday. Um, Tuesday's NXT on tap on Off the Top Media. Um, check out Boyfriend Time on YouTube or React videos. Uh, follow me on Twitter at JacksBo2020. That's about it. I can sound like Tommy Heyman. Does that count? No. No, it doesn't. I really need scouts to, to do it. Uh, I would love to get that with that New Jersey accent, New York, New Jersey accent. Like it would fit well. Um, closing the shop up, guys. We appreciate you for hanging out. Reminder to follow anywhere you do anything on the internet, Facebook, Instagram, iHeartRadio. You have tons of options. There's a couple links in the descriptions. One is the Discord link. It's your direct link to all the content creators, producers, hosts, and minds behind Urban City Radio and off the top media. We also have one down there that's your direct link for your merch. That is the merch shop that will give you everything for botch bots and share shots and off the top media merch, hats, t-shirts, bags, all of it, boxers with Bo's face, all the options. Mm -hmm. The super important to remember though, you have two things that help keep this ship afloat. The first one being your sub for us with Amazon Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, everybody does. You get a free Prime gaming subscription with that. You can give that to any of your free Twitch subscribers absolutely for free. Give it to off the top media, give it to boyfriend time, give Give it to uh, Creation World. Give it to the Wolfpack Podcast. Give it to all my friends, just as long as Jeff Bezos doesn't get it. He has too much money. The lifeblood is patreon.com slash Urban City Radio. You get exclusive free shows, ad free playback up in Smoke Cinema Club. Watch along. It's delicious as fuck. Cookbook, articles, blogs, all the things. Bo, Al, anything for the class before I talk real fast? No, sir. Can I have something with Will's face on it? You can if you want. Discord, holla at your boy. Um, I got to set up my uh, things. I don't have those built in yet, Tommy. I'm slacking, slacking. You guys ready? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, now as we close another episode of Botch, Botch, and Share Shots, I want to take a minute. Thank you for listening. I remind you to go wherever you do anything on the internet. Like, follow, subscribe, and subscribe, and then subscribe again. Leave a comment. Tell me how great I am or how terrible we sound. Either way, it helps the algorithm and it helps find new listeners. If you're feeling really generous to be one of the VIP people, head to patreon.com and donate to the Rivet City Radio Podcast Network. You get some fantastic swag. We get some fantastic guests. It's a win-win for the Ginger Ninja Jacksmo. For the Boss Bitch Al, I am the Will Gray. Thanks for stopping by and listening, my people. Bye-bye. Peace.